Unless you were sleeping underneath a rock or were simply too young to remember, Muammar Gaddafi was a well-known figure in the world of politics at the time. The de facto leader of Libya from 1969 to 2011 is known to many as a ruthless dictator and as some sort of anti-imperialist freedom fighter by others. He rose to power after leading a group of young Libyan army officers against King Idris I in a bloodless coup d'etat. He like many others who ruled countries or even empires is not without his fair share of utterly bizarre antics like calling himself the leader and guide of the revolution instead of prime minister or simply president, like who does that. At a 2004 conference in Tunisia, Gaddafi puffed cigars on the floor of a summit, saying it's a gesture intended to show his disdain for the other leaders gathered there. Amongst the numerous crazed actions the leader has taken, his attempt to take over the Manchester United Football Club is up there with the rest of them. Gaddafi had eight children and one of his sons Al Saudi was also a footballer. To say he was not good at playing football would be taking it lightly on him. Al Saudi Gaddafi is known for his participation in Libyan football, which was arranged in his favor by his father. One law forbade announcing the name of any football player with the exception of Gaddafi. Only numbers of other players were announced. Referees favored Gaddafi's club and security forces were used to silence protests. In one case, security forces opened fire on fans at a 1996 match attended by Al Saudi, killing a number of people in murky circumstances. He is also suspected in the 2005 killing of Bashir al riani a popular Libyan soccer player who was a vocal critic of Gaddafi's regime. On June 6, 2000, the BBC reported that Gaddafi had signed with Maltese champions Bukhara FC and would play for them in the Champions League. The move failed to materialize. In 2003, he signed for Italian Serie A team Perugia, employing Diego Maradona as his technical consultant and Canadian sprinter Ben Johnson as his personal trainer. He made only one substitute appearance against Juventus for Perugia before failing a drug test, due to presence in his system of the illegal substance Nandrolone, a form of steroids. An article in La Repubblica said that even at twice his speed he would still be twice as slow as slow itself. Ouch that had to have hurt. It turns out that being a president's son with the best training at his disposal was still not enough to turn him into a half-decent football player. Al Saudi was also captain of the Libya national football team, captain of his home club in Tripoli, and president of the Libyan Football Federation. Gaddafi joined UEFA Champions League qualifiers Udinese Calcio in 2005 06 playing only 10 minutes in an end-of-season league match against Colliery Calcio. He joined UC Sampdoria during season 2006-2007, without playing a single match. The Glazer family may not be very popular amongst fans as owners of Manchester United but it could have been worse. Actually way worse. The now-deceased Libyan dictator Colonel Gaddafi was hours away from taking control of the club in 2004, it has been revealed. Investment banker Mehmet Dalman, who is currently the chairman of Cardiff City, was the man who brokered the Glazers' purchase of the club in 2004 and 2005. And he revealed in an interview with the Times that it was nearly Gaddafi, and not the Glazers, who bought John Magna and J.P. McManus's 29.9% .9 share in the club at the time. People don't realize how the takeover deal was a whisker away from going to Libya, Dalman said. Gaddafi almost bought the club. That's how close it got, literally, you're talking about a few hours. The dictator's son, Sadi Gaddafi, revealed in 2005 that his father had attempted to buy Manchester United. But it was never clear exactly how close Gaddafi was to owning the club. How he would have fared with the Premier League's infamous fit and proper person test, we will never know. Let us know what other fascinating parts of history you would like the team at Keiko Films to cover, thanks for watching. Until next time.